Okay, so so in this in this one we're going to have a look at the sample paper that's up on examinations.ie for the for the newer junior cycle um, maths um, syllabus. So I'm going to go through all the questions in this paper over a series of videos and um, again with the idea of, of being able to practice sample papers and sample papers can be a little bit harder in some cases um, and some not. So let's start off with question one, part A, write the numbers three, nine and 25 into the three empty boxes below to make the mathematical statement true use each number only once. Okay, so what that's saying is that I somehow have to fit three, nine and 25 into these in, in any order at all. Uh, 25, nine, three, for example. Um, I have to put the three numbers in, but it has to equal 24 over 25. Okay, you can do this by trial and error and trial and error is, is a perfectly fine way of doing maths. It's just you try it out and you see if you're right or wrong. Okay, so a couple of things to note. This number here is 24 over 25, which is less than one whole unit. If that was one whole unit, it would be 25 over 25. So it's less than one whole unit. Okay, so these two need to be smaller fractions, smaller than one unit for you to add them together to still get less than one whole unit. So the way I have them in here now, just randomly thrown in as 25 over five, uh, you can do use your calculator, but 25 divided by five gives you five and nine over three, three threes are nine. So I get eight for that, okay? Or if I was to write it in 25ths, I'm just going onto my calculator now and doing eight by 25, it would be the same as 200 over 25. So you can see clearly that the order I've put in the 25, the nine and the three does, does not work. My numbers are too big. Okay, so how do I make the number smaller? Well, that 25 is a big number. So to keep the numbers small, you would put the big numbers on the bottom. Okay, so it's 25ths. Okay, and as you know from fractions, the easiest way to add fractions, the only way to add fractions is common denominator. So to make, to change fifths into 25, what you're doing to the bottom is you're multiplying by five. That's how you convert to 25ths. So whatever number I put on the top, I would also have to multiply it by five to convert it to 25ths. What I do to the bottom, I must also do to the top. Okay, so any of, any of these fifths that I put in here, um, I would change them to 25ths so that I could see, do I get 24 over 25, 24 25ths. Okay, so, so let's try, let's try three over five, for example. So let's convert three fifths to 25ths. So I multiply the bottom by five, five fives are 25. So now I must also multiply the top by five. So three fifths is equivalent fraction with 15 over 25. They are what's called equivalent fractions. They're the exact same fraction. It's just 15 over 25 is not written in its simplest form. If we write it in its simplest form, in other words, we divide the top and the bottom by five, you get back to the three fifths. Okay, so that's what we call equivalent fractions. Um, and I have 25ths on the bottom. That's a logical place to put the 25 because we're working in 25ths. And the only number uh, left is the nine. So let's put it there. 15 and nine is indeed 24. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's where the three, the nine and the 25 goes. So I hope that one makes sense. <clears throat> so you can see, excuse me, it doesn't fall really under any branch of maths. It kind of is fractions. It kind of is number systems. Um, it's a little bit of, I suppose, common sense maths. Um, so don't be scared by this type of a question. There is one on a lot of papers um, that's kind of a bit random. Okay, part two, write the numbers three, five, nine and 25 into the empty boxes below so that the difference and difference means subtract between the two fractions is as large as possible. Use each number only once. So we want a large difference between them. Okay, 
Um, so you may have to do this by trial and error until you see a pattern. Nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to try. How do I make a big number? Well, I put 25 on the top. And then how do I make a big number out of that? Well, if I put the smallest number on the bottom and I'm going to put that into my calculator and STD him, you can see I'm getting uh, 25 over 3 or 8.333. OK, um, so that's the biggest number I can get there, because if I divide 25 by 5, I get 5. So you can see the pattern there. If I put 9 on the bottom, I'm going to get a smaller number again. OK, so the biggest number I'm going to get is when I put 25 over 3. OK, so I'm going to put that there for now. And then, OK, what do I subtract of it? I can subtract off it 5 over 9 or 9 over 5. OK, so let's play with those two numbers and see where we get. So again, on my calculator, 5 over 9 and STD him. This is if, you're, if, if your brain prefers decimals, you would convert them to decimals like I'm doing here. And that's a 1.8. OK, so when we subtract them, when we get the difference, we want it to be as large as possible. So to get it as large as possible over here, you need to subtract off the smallest number. OK, which would be this one here. And that's how I think you would get the, uh, the difference being as large as possible. OK, nothing wrong with playing around with the four numbers on your calculator and seeing if that pops out. OK, part B then, a positive whole number has exactly four factors. One of the factors is nine, work out the number. OK, so factors. So just a, a revision of factors. So if I ask you to get the factors of 24, it's 24 by one, it's 12 twos. It's eight threes, it's six fours. And then, of course, we go four by six and we go three by eight and two by 12. And I suppose we could go one by 24, OK? But when you're writing out the factors, we tend not to repeat them. So you tend to put them in order. One, two, three, four, six, eight, 12 and 24, OK? So I tend not to do use the ones that repeat because I already have them all captured up here. OK, so 24 has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight factors. OK, if you have a number such as four, so if I was to work out the factors of four, I would say that's uh, four by one and two by two. So you'd write the factors as one comma two comma four. OK, so they are the factors of four. And you can see I don't repeat the two. The two just goes in once. So when it says it has four factors, it has four numbers just like that. So a positive whole number has exactly four factors. So I don't know what the number is, but I do know that if I call the number X, for example, it has, an, um, it has a pair of factors called X by one, and it has another set of factors over here, nine multiplied by something else, okay? Um, and, and X isn't a great one to use in this example because um, it's multiply. So let's call my factors F maybe. So the factors of F are F multiplied by one and nine multiplied by something. OK, how did I know that it was F by one? How do I know that's a set of factors? Well, that's a set of factors of every number. If you think about the factors of three, it's three by one. The factors of six. It's six by one. It's also two by three, but there's always the number itself by one. OK, so whatever number this is, a set of factors is F by one. And then it's told me one of the factors is nine. OK, so how would I do this? Well, if one of the factors is nine, then nine is a multiple. So let's write out the multiples of nine. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63. And let's see, um, and of course there's loads more. Let's look at the factors of these. The factors of nine, nine by one, three by three. So how many factors does that have? Well, it only has three. 
because we don't repeat the number three. Let's look at the factors of 18. Well, we have nine by two, and we have 18 by one. Um, six, 12, 18, six by three. Yeah, so that has one, two, three, four. That has six factors, so it's not that one. Let's look at this one. We have 27 by one, of course, and we have nine, 18, 27. That's it, I think. That has four. Okay, so is our number then in that case, our answer is equal to 27. Okay, and this here as your rough work or as showing how you got your answer is perfectly fine. Okay, doesn't need to be fancy maths. I did it there by, by I suppose, trying out all of the numbers until I got a positive whole number with exactly four factors. And one of the factors is nine. Okay, and then that was that question one complete.